But I'm telling you, all of you who went to these specialists were there because of childhood trauma. Now, there are diseases that you can't put into that category. Uh, there are genetic diseases. If you have the gene, you'll have the disease. It's nothing to do with life or stress. It's just, although that can affect the course of it, but whether you get it or not, it's simply genetic. Those diseases are extraordinarily rare. Most diseases have little or nothing to do with uh, genetic factors. It's what happens inside you as a result of what happens to you. There's one major source of illness, and I'm talking about any kind of illness, uh, whether that's so-called mental illness or uh, physical illness, and that's childhood trauma. And this is true whether I'm talking about anxiety, depression, ADHD, addiction, or if I'm talking about multiple sclerosis, cancer, rheumatoid arthritis, fibromyalgia, and as I said, malignancy as well. And that seems like a very uh, bold statement, but I'll be concentrating on the physical side of it. When I say physical side, I'm talking about the illnesses uh, that are not considered to be mental illnesses. And it's quite okay, I, I wish you would argue with me, uh, both in your mind and also verbally. Uh, that's the way we get through to the heart of things. I'll be saying you, to you that just about everything, not everything, but just about everything that we call illness, is rooted in compensations and adaptations that have to do with uh, childhood trauma. The adaptations that uh, children are forced to resort to in response to early stress, help them endure that early duress and difficulty, but those same adaptations become a source of pathology later on and they even threaten longevity. In order to understand the basis of that, we have to consider how we look at human beings so, and how we look at disease. Now, Western medicine looks at disease from a particular perspective. And you have to understand something about medicine. It's science, all right, but it's also ideology. And there's a difference between science and ideology. There's a lot of science in it, and it's great science. But there's also ideology. And ideology is a point of view. It's, it's, it's a, the Germans say, it's a Weltanschauung. It's, it's, it's a world view that you're not conscious of. That, that you have hidden beliefs that you don't question. And people that question the hidden beliefs are seen as outliers or mavericks. And that's an ideology. And that exists in all realms. So there's always uh, ideological biases hidden in any system. And the logic of the system operates within those biases. Now, what are the biases of Western medicine? Well, the biases of Western medicine are, number one, that diseases um, have either uh, physical causes uh, in a sense of genes or external um, uh, forces like bacteria or viruses or toxins, or we don't know what the causes are. So the causes are either physical or the disease is what we call idiopathic. We don't know what the source of it is. The second bias is that diseases happen to organs. So you have heart disease, and you have lung disease, and you have disease of the connective tissue or the liver or whatever. And then there's specialties designated to study in depth the diseases of these organs. So we separate the organ from the, the whole person. And then we separate the person from the environment, so that the social environment, uh, we might acknowledge the role of the physical environment, but we certainly not acknowledge the role of the social environment. In Western medical terms, the average physician would not be able to explain to you, and this is not for lack of intelligence, simply for lack of training, would not be able to explain to you why is it that the more episodes of racism a black American woman experiences, the greater her risk for asthma. It's just a documented fact. Nor would the average physician be able to tell you very easily the, the multiple times documented fact that children whose parents are stressed are more likely to have asthma. As a matter of fact, the degree of the child's asthma has been correlated with the degree of mental uh, disturbance on the part of the parent. So you go to the physician, you get the inhalers, but that's all that happens. The human beings can't be separated from their environment. And what happens inside an individual on a physiological level 
is very much uh, determined or at least uh, affected by what happens to them on a social level. So, uh, nor, nor would the average physician be able to explain to you based on their training, why is it that if you look at lung cancer, the more adverse childhood experiences that you have, in other words, the more trauma you've experienced, the greater your risk of lung cancer, and this is true even if you cancel out smoking as a factor. Nor would the average physician be able to say a whole lot about the fact that a Canadian study showed that if you were abused as a child, your risk of cancer goes up by nearly 50%. And this is even after you've factored in or factored out things like smoking and drinking, which abused people are more likely to do. At the same time, human beings have always known, we've always known that things can't be separated. So there's, there's always been this... Um, tussle, you might say, between a unitary, holistic view of human beings and, and existence in general, and the dualistic view that separates things. So the Buddha said 2,500 years ago, he said, look at a leaf or a raindrop. He says, and meditate. He says, meditate on all the conditions that are necessary for the existence of the leaf or a raindrop. You look at a, 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 a leaf, it contains the sun, the light, the photosynthesis, it contains the earth in the form of minerals, and it contains the sky in form of the water. So the, the leaf literally contains earth, sun, and sky. He says, uh, the birth of any phenomenon, he says, is, is dependent on the birth of other phenomena. He says, without the many, there cannot be the one. Without the one, there cannot be the many. And that was the Buddha 2,500 years ago. And uh, wonderful writer, um, Susan Griffin, in her really transcendent book, The Course of Stones, wrote that the story of one life cannot be told separately from the story of other lives. Who are we? The question is not simple. What we call the self is part of a larger matrix of relationships and society. All the lives that surround us are in us. There's a significant difference... Being a family physician and a, and a specialist uh, in that the specialist certainly does know, and blessedly so, a lot about a certain organ and a certain system, but they don't know the patient. And by the time you see the patient, the patient's already sick, and usually they already have a diagnosis. At least we know what area uh, the, the, the disease is. As the family physician, you get to see people before they get sick. So you know what their personalities are like for years before they get sick. And also you get to see them in the context of their families, including their multi-generational family of origin. Uh, let me just ask you right now, uh, how many of you in the, say, in the last five years have been to a cardiologist, a neurologist, a gastroenterologist, a dermatologist, maybe I said rheumatologist, any kind of an ologist? Just put your hand up. Okay, great. All right. Now, uh, put your hand up again if they asked you about childhood trauma. One person, that's great. Uh, if they asked you about uh, stresses in your relationship with your spouse, about uh, job stress, like a 5 to 10%, and that's really good if they asked you about it. And I, I wonder how long they took the discussion, but it doesn't even occur to them. But I'm telling you, all of you who went to these specialists were there because of childhood trauma. Virtually all of you. Now, there are diseases that you can't put into that category. Uh, there are genetic diseases. If you have the gene, you'll have the disease. It's nothing to do with life or stress. It's just, although that can affect the course of it, but whether you get it or not is simply genetic. Those diseases are extraordinarily rare. Like one in 10,000 of the population will have a disease like that. Most diseases have little or nothing to do with uh, genetic factors. So, these are then the patterns that I noticed in my clients. And by the way, um, when I said childhood trauma, probably some of you are at least internally shaking your heads. Cause
looking at your life, and I never had any trauma, because it all depends on how you use the word trauma. And uh, trauma, uh, for me, and that, that's, that's a whole other lecture, but trauma is not what happens to you. It's what happens inside you as a result of what happens to you. And things can happen inside you for which you don't need very dramatic events. But trauma essentially is a restriction of your capacity. It's a limitation. It's a constriction in the body. It's a constriction in your mental capacity to respond in the present moment from your authentic self. Essentially, trauma is a restriction of your authentic self in the present moment. That's what trauma is.